there's an old saying, they don't pay you for the gig, they pay you to get to the gig. It's riding on the bus that's the hardest part of the whole job, you know, not sleeping like you would at home. So anyway, I'm partying the whole time, and uh, I started drinking when I was in high school and just never let up, you know. I, I went to the University of Georgia, but I, I majored in partying, I think. And so I, had, it was a given that I was a drinker and pot smoker and hell raiser. You know, that was part of the deal that you got with me. And, and then I had friends that we were all, we were on the same wavelength. Keith Whitley was one of my best friends and we toured together and he died of alcohol poisoning. And he was at home, we had just gotten in off the road and then like two days later, he choked on his own vomit. I mean, it was pitiful. You would think that it would have knocked some sense into my head, but it didn't. His manager called me up and said, man, we found Keith dead this morning. And I thought, wow, this is crazy. And he, he started crying and said, can I send these reporters and news people to your house? I can't face them. So all these news people showed up at my house. And I had to be the face of the Keith Whitley tragedy. And but I didn't slow down. Keith and I used to go to this psychologist. They made us go to this psychologist on Music Row and sit in this group therapy thing where everybody whined about their problems and everybody was trying to get sober. And Keith and I were looking at our watch saying, boy, when's this going to be over? We want to go get a drink. I mean, we, we were totally not buying into the program. So... And then I would try to, uh, the Capitol Records people said, look, if you don't get sobered up, we're going to drop you. So uh, I'd, I'd, I'd get on a horse and ride a while and fall off. Get on a horse and ride a while and fall off. And then we wrote this song later, on a few years later, called Wine Into Water. My friend Bruce Burt, who just passed away, great songwriter, wrote a lot of number ones. Um, we wrote some hits for me together. And... He was cutting grass, he told me, and this wine into water idea came to him. And I think he was really thinking about me because we were such close friends and I was I was in bad shape. There was a, another friend named Ted Hewitt and, and we all got together and we wrote this song called Wine Into Water and it's just a prayer to get sober. That's all the song is. But I didn't get sobered up and stay sober. I'd be drunk again and sober up and get drunk again. And then finally, about I'm 67 years old, so about 11 or 12 years ago, I didn't write the day down, but I was woke up with a hangover. I mean, I got to where I was pouring vodka in my coffee and firing up a joint first thing in the morning. I mean, that's where I was, that's where my head was. I was just about to die. I woke up one morning, it's a, just a cliche of a story that you've heard before, but it's true. I looked in the mirror. I was just sick and tired of being tired and sick. And I looked in the mirror one day and I looked like death. And I said, man, what are you doing? You're about to blow everything. You're about to lose your family, your job, everything. And you know, I asked God to help me and I have not had one craving since that moment. That's it's amazing. Time. I went from thinking 24 hours, if I was awake, I was wanting to make sure I had another drink handy or another joint handy or a pill or whatever it was. I wasn't, if, if I got to where when, a bu when the bus would pull into a town, my eyes would search for a liquor store and I can zero in on them. To this day, it was such a habit. I, I'll spot a liquor store, bam, just like radar. I don't don't stop anymore, or even think about stopping. But what I'm saying is, I would see the liquor store and then I would go, okay, now I know I can go buy something to drink. That's what I was thinking about, and I went from thinking about that constantly to never thinking about it. Isn't and God good? Like that, bam. He's so wonderful. You know, before we close, I want to know what, where you're going and what is God doing in your life now? Shoot, man, I'm having the time of my life. I'm having more fun. You know, when I, when I quit drinking, I was scared I was going to lose all my fun. 
I, I was scared that my I wasn't gonna have any fun anymore. I always looked at the people that weren't partying as a bunch of squares. I, I would think, don't y'all know there's a party going on over here? What are y'all even thinking? I mean, we're having fun over here. And then I found out, bam, that I was having way more fun now than than I ever was when I was doing all that whiskey and dope. And it I know it sounds corny, but it's the truth. And I'm sure people, some people will see this, oh, you know. But hey, I'm here to tell you, man, I've been there and I know what I'm talking about. And and I can get people that have addiction problems or mental health problems. I'm just severely bipolar. And thank goodness Sheila got me to a good doctor that finally diagnosed. And that was one thing that my doctor told me that was fueling my drinking and all was my manic. Well, I know somebody right now is listening to you and you're an inspiration to them. And T. Graham, I am just so honored and thank you so much oh, you're for coming on to the show. And I know somebody Thanks. is being blessed See, right that's now. That's the thing. I end every show with wine into water and I tell them my story because you never know who's going to get blessed. And I was talking to Larry Gatlin the other day and I'd done my uh, testimony during a show and I said, man, do you think this is too corny or anything? He said, man, don't you ever stop doing no. that because the day that you don't do it, there's probably somebody out there that needs to hear it. That's right. And Wine Into Water continues to help people. I urge people to go on YouTube and and watch the Wine Into Water videos. I've had people tell me it's uh, changed their mind about suicide. Um, I, I had an old couple write me a letter that their son had dropped dead cutting their grass, and they made a suicide pact and we're going to kill themselves, and her wine and water changed her mind. This woman told me she'd been beaten up by her husband again, went out on a lonely road, was going to shoot herself in the head, turn on the radio, and bam, wine and water came on, changed her mind. This football player in Tampa told me that he started smoking crack. He lost his three daughters, his wife, his job, his house, went through his money, pulled his truck out on uh, New Year's Day out in the field, hooked up a hose to the exhaust pipe, ran it in the cab, going to kill himself, turn on the radio, and bam, wine and the water came on. I got stories like that all day long. I hear from people every week. Well, I know somebody today is listening well, to Well, there's a way out. I'm telling you, there's a way out. And Jesus Christ can change your life, and it's real. God is real, and don't ever doubt it.